If you haven't eaten for six to eight hours, your stomach's empty, right? Right? Maybe, maybe not. And if you don't want to put your patient at risk for gastric aspiration, you need a tool to quickly and accurately assess gastric contents. That tool is gastric ultrasound. And in the next few minutes, we're going to turn you into a gastric pocus expert. Aspiration of gastric contents is a nightmare and is a leading cause of anesthetic-related death. Many of these events are in patients who were thought to be sufficiently fasted, but surprise, up comes last night's cheeseburger. The fact is, fasting guidelines are a rough guess at best, mostly based on observations made in the era of chloroform anesthesia. There's a long list of factors that delay gastric emptying, from pain to opioids to diabetes to GLP-1 agonist medications. And that just makes the guidelines all that more unreliable. Luckily, Gastric Pocus is here to save the day. With ultrasound, we can make both a qualitative assessment, what's in the stomach, and a quantitative assessment, how much is in the stomach. These immediately help with clinical decision making. We'll do this for three reasons. Number one, when the fasting history is unclear. Sometimes a patient has a language barrier or is confused and a family member claims they ate a cookie for breakfast, or sometimes more than a cookie. Number two, when there are factors that decrease gastric emptying time like diabetes, pain, or opioids. Or number three, when the patient is within the fasting interval and you want to see if it's safe to proceed. We often have add-on cases that ate within six hours. Knowing if the stomach is full or empty often changes our airway or anesthetic management. The stomach is made up of several sections, but the part we're interested in for this purpose is the antrum, here. The antrum is a reliable and relatively superficial place to assess gastric content and volume. Note that this lines up more or less with the aorta and the spine, and these will be good landmarks when we scan. In the sagittal view, the antrum is between the inferior edge of the liver and the pancreas. Going from superficial to deep, we now have the edge of the liver, the antrum, the pancreas, the aorta, and the spine. Okay, so how do we do this? First, grab yourself a probe, ideally a curvilinear one, but if you have a slim adult or a child, a linear probe can work as well. Next, place the probe on the abdomen in the sagittal orientation, just below the xiphoid process. The left side of the screen should be towards the head of the patient. You may have to slide the probe slightly to the right or left until you see this. The most obvious thing is the hypoechoic liver. We can also see the spine at the bottom and the pulsatile aorta here, so we know we're in a good plane. This structure here is the antrum. It's a round, muscular structure that lies just deep to the inferior edge of the liver. In some cases, you'll see the pancreas and the superior mesenteric artery coming off the aorta. But if you can't make them out, it's not critical. Focus on the liver, antrum, spine, and aorta. Now, you may see other hollow organs in cross-section like the duodenum or the colon, but the antrum is easily identifiable by its location right next to the liver, as well as the fact that it has a characteristic five-layer wall. It's often described as a bullseye or target because of these concentric layers. The outermost bright ring is a serosa layer. The dark middle ring of the target is the thick muscular layer that helps move contents forward. And then we have the submucosa, the mucosa, and finally the mucosa lumen interface. Now that we know where the antrum is, it's time to do a qualitative assessment. In other words, what's inside? We're gonna look for one of four characteristic patterns. The first is empty. An empty antrum often looks like a bullseye, like we see here. The antral walls are collapsed in and the contrast between the mucosa and the muscular layers makes it look like a target. It's normal to see a small amount of fluid that represents baseline gastric secretions. You can see the mucosa folds in this example. Sometimes the antrum looks less like a target and more like a deflated soccer ball. The key point is that there is no substantial content within the antrum. The next pattern is clear fluids. The antrum here looks expanded and full of dark homogeneous liquid. You can often see little bubbles floating around, giving it a starry night appearance. Yes, when you drink water, you have a belly full of stars. And then we have solids, which includes things like thick liquids, milk, frappuccinos, mochaccinos, basically all the chinos. It's the fat in those liquids that makes them physiologically like solids. When we first eat solids, we get this frosted glass appearance due to the presence of swallowed air. The air causes this artifact that pretty much ruins the view of anything else. As the stomach digests the solids and turns it into a soupy material, it takes on a more homogeneous mid-tone appearance, like this. Imagine what a smoothie would look like in your stomach. Sometimes you can see solid chunks, or a separation between liquid portion and the solid or fatty liquid phase. 
So solids have two phases, early solids with a frosted glass appearance and late solids with this smoothie appearance. That gives us four sonographic patterns of stomach contents, empty, clear liquids, early solids, and late solids. Now, before we get to the scanning sequence, it's important to know that patient position can also influence the appearance, and here's why. Imagine this jug is a stomach, and this part here is the antrum. With a patient supine, a small or moderate amount of fluid may stay in this larger, more dependent part and give the antrum an empty appearance. If we turn the patient to the right lateral position, any fluid present in the stomach will flow to the antrum, and you'll see it. Tricky stomach, you can't fool me. This gives rise to a grading system to assess risk. If we have an empty stomach in both supine and lateral positions, that's called a grade zero stomach, and you're truly empty. Low risk for aspiration, carry on. If we have an empty stomach in the supine position, but see some clear fluid in the lateral, that suggests that we have less than 1.5 mils per kilo of clear fluids, or roughly less than 100 mils. This is considered a grade one stomach. Since that volume of clear fluid is associated with normal gastric secretions or a small residual amount of clears, a grade one stomach is also considered low risk for aspiration. However, if you have clear fluid in your stomach in both the supine and lateral positions, this is a grade two stomach and implies greater than 1.5 mils per kilo volume and an elevated risk for aspiration. Full stomach, do not pass go. This antral grading system has been validated in children, obese and non-obese adults, and in pregnant patients, so it's very useful and doesn't require any math. If you have a patient who can't be turned to right lateral, the semi-recumbent position is a decent alternative. It's not quite as accurate as lateral, but a reasonable second choice in trauma or critically ill patients. So how do we put this together and scan clinically? The first step is to scan with the patient's supine. If you see solids or liquids, you are done. The stomach is considered full, and that patient is at increased risk for aspiration. If you see an empty antrum, you then need to turn the patient lateral. Scan the antrum again. If it's empty, great, you've got a grade zero stomach, and it's empty, done. If you see clear fluids in the antrum, that's a grade one stomach, and you're probably low risk. However, there's one more confirmatory test we can do bedside to make really sure, and that's a quantitative exam. We'll do this for clear fluids only. Remember, if you see solids or smoothie-like material, it's a full stomach and you're done your assessment. And this is easy to do. With the patient in the lateral position, you'll freeze the image of the antrum. If there's a lot of peristaltic contraction, try to get the biggest possible antral image. Then you'll calculate the cross-sectional area. Most modern machines will allow you to trace the perimeter of the antrum, making sure to include the serosa and muscularis layers. You can see in this example, our CSA is just over 19 centimeters squared. Another method is to take the product of the AP diameter and the cranial caudal diameter, multiply by pi and divide by four. Ugh, did I mention I hate math? Anyway, two different ways to get CSA. Once you have your cross-sectional area, you can use this handy nomogram to estimate the gastric volume. As you can see here, there is some age dependency, but a rough rule is if you have a CSA of less than 10 centimeters squared, you're probably low risk. Is gastric scanning harder in obese patients? Yeah, somewhat. It'll be deeper for sure, but practice on the slim people and you will skill up quickly. The nice thing is the antrum is always relatively shallow. Point of care ultrasound of the stomach is easy, quick, non-invasive, and gets you real-time answers that can help change your clinical management and keep patients safe.